Good morning. Good morning. It's Friday morning. It's 10 o'clock. It's our time on Divine Restoration. And my heart is really Divine Restoration is all about to be healed. Maybe on some time I will start doing some live teachings on counseling. Um, because my passion is really to bring healing to the body of Christ restoration i just believe there's so many people that are really struggling they in church and they struggling good morning paul um, they in church they struggling but they just don't know how to be or to overcome this situation so i believe good morning umar i believe really that um, yes uh, the word of god is there but we have so many wounded soldiers in church and uh, i know pastors are struggling yeah you've got so little people of the of your congregation that's really active because most of them are struggling with things in their lives and they just don't know how to overcome that they just don't get restored and this is where i will go maybe in the days to come so we will bring understanding and so that healing can come to you but yes good morning good morning salamat sore also to all my indonesian friends also the family there and also to you so today we go on part two of what is your following distance from jesus because just being you know, uh, 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 called and chosen, you know, doesn't necessarily make you being approved by God. Yes, you're accepted by Him. So today I want to go to the second part of this and just to refresh your memory. Two days ago, we spoke about what is your following distance with Jesus. And I was reading the scripture in Revelation 17, uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, that says, The Lamb is, is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with Him are called, chosen, and faithful. Speaking about three categories. Many are called, few are chosen, and fewer still are faithful. And um, the whole thing is, is the faithful actually is the overcomers overcomers mentioned in the book of revelation i also made the statement i believe according to me maybe this is also speaking about the bride of christ not everybody is the bride of christ amen so and then i talked about four groups you know there was the multitude that followed jesus but their main focus was their healings they only followed him for what they can get from jesus they were never focused to the outside helping and assisting so that's the multitude and we will read later on in john chapter 6 66 that many of these disciples left jesus they were not just continuous following jesus and then we get the 70 jesus choose 70 and he sent them out they were in ministry many times people in ministry is not really, you know, they think the ministry um, will, will make them to be faithful and to be at the end, you know, the overcomer. So they, they give everything in the ministry, but you know, the ministry is above their relationship and following distance to Jesus. And then we get, you know, after the 70, we get the 12. Jesus choose 12 and 12 followed him for three and a half years but out of the 12 there's the fourth group that is three james and john and peter that he actually took up to the mountain of configuration good morning elizabeth so we see god is is really out of the group there's a small portion good morning pastor marius dr marius um, there's a small portion that, that followed him, but that he allowed to see him being configured on the mountain. And this is also where the father said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. So this is just uh, getting into line. What is your following distance regarding Jesus? So, yeah, and then we saw how Jesus also in, 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 in the book of Judges, how through Gideon, 
there was 32,000 possible soldiers. And then the ones that's not wholehearted in, in this battle, the ones that got, that's fearful, what happened? Gideon, God just sent them home. And then 10,000 remained. And then God bring this test. They all come to the river. But God was looking at something else. Good morning, uh, Berenik. Um, so, and then out of 9,700 was just about their thirst. Once again, they, what they wanted. But they were not, not suitable for the battle. They were not, once again, it was just about their thirst of water. But 300, even the thirsty, were checking out the surroundings. They were the true soldiers that said, even I'm thirsty, I'm still a soldier. I will check my surroundings. Good morning, Helena. So, and then at the end, 300 were, 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 uh, were uh, at the end, actually were chosen by God uh, and, and, and Gideon, and they brought the victory. Today, we, we go to another, another uh, portion of this. And today is the question, um, well pleased or well pleased or not well pleased to God? Now, this morning, we need to understand that, you know, only one was well pleased. God was only well pleased with one. And this is what we will, this morning will check. But there was a group of people chosen, accepted, but God the Father was not well pleased with them. And we can go, you know, who were these people? If we could go to the book uh, 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 of, of Numbers chapter 1 verse 46, 46, it speaks about God's people, His chosen people, the Israelites. They were, they were accepted, God chose them, but you know, God was not well pleased with them. And they perished in the, in the wilderness because of unbelief. So it's actually very similar to the 32 of the, the you know, the 22,000 that left Gideon and even the 9,700. God checked what's in their hearts. And we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. Let me just go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. Listen to what it says. Nevertheless, nevertheless with most of them, that's the Israelites, God was not pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. God was not pleased with them. Those Israelites had been redeemed out of Egypt by the blood of, of a lamb. Symbolic of our redemption through Christ. It means they were chosen. They were accepted. But they were not approved by God. And, 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 so, and they had been baptized in the Red Sea and in the cloud. Symbolic of the baptism in water and baptism in the, in the Holy Spirit. Yet God was not happy with them. Let's go back again to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. But let me read from verse from verse uh, 1 to 4 or to 5. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. So they all were selected, they all were approved, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased. So, God was not happy with them because of unbelief. But you know, even God was not happy, He took care of them. I want to tell you this morning, doesn't matter your following distance. God has chosen you. He, he, he basically uh, called you. But he wants more of you. He wants to bring you to a higher dimension. There's actually a higher calling. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14 says, uh, Press toward the mark for the price of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, we need to press in for that higher calling. This is what God wants us to do. So, even this Israelites, God provided for them. In their physical needs, in their material needs. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 4. Your clothes did not wear out on you, nor did your foot, your foot swell these 40 years. 
Moses told them at the end of the 40 years, you know, God healed all their sicknesses. God did many miracles for them. There's no other nation on this planet during those 40 years that saw so many miracles. Yes, they were called. Yes, they were chosen. But they were not fit and seen as the faithful to get into the promised land. So yes, they had the opportunity. And I'm telling you, I'm talking to you this morning. God has given you the opportunity to be the faithful one, to be the overcomer. But what's in your heart? Because what's in your heart and the way your relationship is with God truly will determine what is your following distance with Him. Amen. So He took care of them in this 40 years. In Hebrew chapter 3 verse 17, it says, God was angry with them. Why? Of unbelief. Because they were not focused how they can get to a higher calling. How they can get. And you know, this is there's a calling that God is actually uh, 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 reaching out and said, you know what? I want more of you. God teaches us that God answers pray, answered the prayers of carnal believers too. God answered their prayers and that He provides with them all of their earthly needs and supernaturally He provides for them. So um, the fact that God does a miracle for us proves nothing about our spirituality. I want to say it again. The fact that you see miracles does not prove how spiritual you are. Amen. It only proves that God is good and He makes His sun shine on the righteous and on the unrighteous. So miracles are no guarantee. Jesus also warned us that in the final day of judgment, many who had done miracles in His name would, would be rejected and disqualified. And we read this in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. Listen what the Word of God said. He said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I knew you, depart from me, me you who have practiced lawlessness. Many of those men, not just a few, but many of them who have these miracles and maybe you, this is this, you have this amazing ministry, but it's not a proof that you are faithful and an overcomer. So many people rest in that. But you know what the question is? Are you the James, the John, and the Peter that was chosen to see Jesus being uh, manifest uh, on the Mount of, uh, you know, being configured? And, and, and uh, only three saw that. Amen. So, but the problem is, Many people today, and this is what Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 7, 22, it's what's in their heart, their character. There's so many sins that in their private lives and in their thoughts and attitudes, it's about your character. Good morning, Pastor Kevin. So it's about character. It's not about the works you're doing. You can do the most grateful works for God, but Matthew still 7, 22, 23 still, still says, it's what's in your heart because you can say, God, I've done all of this. Jesus will still say, I don't approve of you. Why? Because of these things in our hearts. The working of miracles by itself is no indication that a man is approved of God. Yes, you are called, you are chosen. But the Bible says that many are called in Matthew twenty-two fourteen. Many are called, few are chosen and fewer still are faithful. Can you stand before God and being faithful? Is your life, your mind, your set, your attitude that you don't want to sin and your mind, you're focused on, on the higher calling? Are you pressed in amidst your situations? Maybe you've lost your passion. What then was the secret of his, Jesus, of his, of his being, uh, being approved by God? You see, uh, let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 5. I want to go to the next one. There was one that God was well pleased of, and that we know is Jesus. In Matthew 3.17, let me just go to Matthew 3.17. So this morning I'm talking about, is God well pleased with you? 
Is God well pleased with you? I just want to get to Matthew 3.17. It says the following. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son, whom, who with who I am well pleased. We remember this is when Jesus was baptized, and when he came out the heavens, and the voice came down of the Father and said, This is my beloved son, on whom I am well pleased. If we read in Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, we see also here that Jesus uh, uh, was on this on the mountain and he was transfigured he was still speaking when behold a bright cloud overshadowed him and, and a voice from the cloud said this is my beloved son who, with whom i am well pleased listen to him you know god was not well pleased with his with the israelites because of the unfaithful why were they unfaithful because they were not wholehearted understood the promise god has given them it was all about the natural, what they want now, and not see the higher calling. And time after time, if they didn't receive something, they were mad and they murmured with, with, with Moses. And time after time, because they never could see further than their own needs. All that God must do for them. And even God did all of them for them, yet they were not willing to press in. And that's why God was not well pleased with him. But Jesus, on the other hand, you know, God was well pleased. But we need to look how, good morning, Sonia, how and why did Jesus well, was well pleased with uh, God the Father was well pleased with, with Jesus. So what was the secret, you know, that, that God approved Jesus? Well, it was not about his ministry, because when God said it in, 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 uh, in, Matthew, uh, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, Jesus only was baptized now. He never ministered. He never had a ministry. Good morning, George. So we cannot say God was well pleased because of the works of the ministry that Jesus did. No, this was just on the beginning of his ministry. So when God said, I'm well pleased about it. So it must have happened what happened in Jesus' 30 years of his life. So we have to look, what was his growing up? Now Jesus was, was firstly, if you look at his home, he was the son of, of a carpenter. And you know what? Uh, Joseph and Mary didn't have a lot of money. Because we will read that... Um, you know, when they had to, to bring Jesus and they had to bring a sacrifice, it says that in Leviticus 12, 8, it speaks of you need to bring a lamb. But if you don't have money for the lamb, you can bring uh, two turtle doves or two young pigeons. So we should look in Luke chapter 2, verse 24. So when Joseph and Mary took, according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So according to that, they actually were not a wealthy family. They, they didn't have that much. But yet, yet, Jesus grew up in that house. And, and he was tempted with many things. And I want to speak to young people. It's not an excuse regarding your situation. You know, God is with you. You know, many times we, we do the wrong things and then we excuse ourselves and say, you know, but it's because of my surroundings, because I am poor, because of what I don't have. But, you know, Jesus also went through that. He was tested in all things. You know, it's about godly character. God is looking about the character. Ministry. You know, you can have this most successful ministry and you can have done so many healings. But when it comes to character, you know, it's about even you have this ministry and you look at the housewife that's been busy. At the end, both have character. And God is looking at both and both have the same opportunity to be the faithful one. Both have the opportunity to become the overcomer because of what's in your heart. The same way when Gideon tested the 32,000 and came to only 300 that was faithful enough to, to go into battle with Gideon and to overcome this battle. Amen. So 
We will also see that on the day of judgment, those that will be first will be last and those that will be last. What does it mean about character? What's in your heart? So Jesus' example really was one of he word tested in all of these things. The second thing, so the first thing is about his home. Amen. If we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says, For you, you know that great, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that thou he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Jesus was only a carpenter's son. The second thing, at some times, Jesus became the carpenter. And he was also tested being in business. My question is, this morning, how is your business? Are you running your business on biblical principles? Or you allow things, maybe compromises, maybe things, circumstances, or maybe there was a bit of greed, maybe this was this. Jesus was never in competition with another carpenter. You see, God is looking at what we do. How do we do that? And when we look at Jesus, Jesus was faithful in all of these things. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17, it says the following, He had to be made like his brethren in all things, that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Amen. This is what gives us encouragement. God is with us. Yes, you are tested, but a test is to bring you so you can become the faithful one. Although you are called, although you are chosen, this is only the first step. God wants to bring you into another dimension where you can press in to the higher calling. So just being chosen and approved or just being chosen and called and chosen is, means that God accepted you. But it's not to mean that God approved you. For the higher calling. Amen. And then yes. There needs to be faithfulness. Like I said. I believe Jesus also were faced with a lot of temptation. That we also today find in businesses. Amen. My question is. What's in your heart this morning? Can you stand before God. Being faithful. And really say. That. Uh, God is well pleased about you. Your life. And this also means. What is your following distance? Because once we allow sin, maybe in our business, in our house, you know, it brings a distance between us and our relationship with God. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10, God's word said, It was fitting for him for whom all things and through whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to perfect it, the author of their salvation through sufferings. So sufferings is actually a test. Like I've said two days ago, sufferings is actually, you know, God is testing you. Yes, you are chosen. Yes, you are called. But God wants to bring you to a higher dimension. God really wants you to be the overcomer. God really wants you, your heart and mind to be focused on Him. So the temptation or the sufferings you are going through is only a test. But the way you handle it will show your character, will show your faith. Even like God's people in the, in the wilderness. Good morning, Henry. Even like God's people in the wilderness. I believe so many Christians are really like this Israelites. Yes, they, they were called and they were chosen. And then they think, well, okay, I, I am saved. Yes, you are saved. But this is only the beginning. This is only a beginning. And I want to go to Romans chapter, and that I will conclude. In Romans chapter 12, we really read, uh, this is a scripture that many, many, we read so many times, especially as pastors. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I want you to listen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, Romans 12, chapter 12, verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Some of the translations only say this is your, your beginning. It's your only, it's your normal worship. It's your normal relationship. That's just the first level. Then it goes to how to get into the second realm or the second level. To be the one that, you know, is chosen for the higher calling. To be like James, Peter and John that were actually invited to get up where Jesus was transfigured. 
Now listen to what he said in verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. Also two days ago, I said one of the biggest things is we are so focused on the worries and the stuff that we are facing. But you know, those things will make you unfruitful. So it says here, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Meaning, don't just stay with the ordinary things. That's your ordinary worship. You need to press into the higher calling. But you have to renew your mind. That by testing, just like the, the soldiers that, that actually were tested with Gideon, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. What is the good and acceptable and perfect. Uh, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So there's really a higher calling that God has called you for. And this morning, you know, we're struggling with so many things. The problems we face is not really the issue. Those, those soldiers that Gideon took to the river, the 10,000, didn't know it was a test. Yet the way they act out of their thirst, because they were brought because, to the river because they were thirsty. It was a natural small thing. Everybody were geared up. But the way how they drink proved to God what's really in their hearts. So my question to you today is, what is your following distance with God? Are you just a multitude every time you go to church, every time you pray? And is it just about what you need? Maybe that's just your ordinary Christianity. God wants more. Or maybe you like the 70, you are involved in your church in some ministry. And you think, well now, it doesn't prove that you are faithful. It doesn't prove. It only says, you know, God is good. And then we get to the 12. Even you served and you left everything and you said, God, I will serve you. I will do anything. Yes, like 12 disciples, but even one of them... You know, there was a Judas. Even he walked with Jesus for three and a half years. Why? What's, what? You know, his love for money that was, was in his heart with this corruptible seed that even that brought him to a place where he, let's call it sin, delivered Jesus. But out of the twelve, there was only three that was really blessed. You know, I just want to read again in Matthew 17. Let me just get to it quickly again. And this is my message this morning to you. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. If you want to get more closer in the higher dimension, you need to be one of the three. You cannot be an ordinary Christian. You must have to press in for the higher calling. It's not coming by itself. It's not just happening. You need to press in. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes become white as light. And behold, there appeared to him Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that you are, and we can read, but I want to just Come and then God the Father said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. What is your following distance? If you not that close, it's time to change. So I just want to pray for you, and may God bless you. Amen. Father, I thank you for the Word of God. May the Word of God just speak to our hearts. Let us not be conformed to this world, Lord, all the things surrounding us. We also, if we, if we read in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all of these things will be added. Once again, we see it's not about our needs first. Like the people, the Israelites in the desert, it was what they need. They wanted something to eat. They wanted water. and they want, But they never saw the miracles of the clothes still intact. Even the feet were not swollen. No sickness. All the miracles. Yet, all of those things, God showed him who he was as a father to them, keeping the promises, yet they never went into the promised land. It needed a next generation that had a different mindset, a different spirit. And this is what we also pray, Lord, let us have this different mindset 
this different spirit. And I pray to everyone listening this morning. I want to encourage them. Don't just be on the level of, you know, being called and being chosen. Uh, this is enough. No, we need to press into the higher calling. Father, therefore, I release your word over them. Just draw them closer. But let us be renewed, Father. Also, I pray your blessing, Father, over us for today and this weekend. And let your, let, your, let your fire just burn in our hearts. Whatever in our character is not in line, Father, let it just be burned. Forgive us for those sins. But let us press in, Lord. And therefore, I release that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May God bless you. May you have an amazing weekend. We will then see each other on Monday, 10 o'clock again. God bless you.